the curtains came down on the 2024 Olympic Games. The spotlight is now turned to the Paralympics and of course the resumption of all major football leagues in Europe. The 2024 Olympic Games were meant to celebrate unity, diversity and the remarkable talents of athletes from all over the world. However, for many, the opening ceremony of the Olympics seemed to present something quite different. What was intended as a grand global spectacle turned into a controversial display that some viewed as a mockery of the Christian faith. As the games went on, several top athletes withdrew, sparking debate over whether this was mere coincidence or a sign of a deeper spiritual conflict. As the spotlight turned to the Paralympics, one comment at the opening ceremony remarked, we sense France will not waste this moment to make history and push for change. While the Olympic opening ceremony faced criticism for its focus on lewdness, nudity, and promotion of LGBTQI issues, the organizers of the Paralympics opening ceremony can be commended for offering a more balanced and respectful presentation. By now, I guess you have read and viewed several commentaries about the bizarre mockery of Christianity, especially a scene showing the Lord's Supper, a very important Christian ritual that was turned into a disturbing mockery. This is not just an offense against the ceremony, it's a mockery of the very essence of our faith. Or that you unravel and reject Christianity, which is what built the West, the more you're going to get this pagan shoved in your face. Last night was the opening ceremonies for the Olympics, and we saw a desecration, a blasphemy, if you would, of the Last Supper scene, where there were transgender people sitting up on a stage and blaspheming the name of Christ as they were trying to replicate the Last Supper. Many world leaders are now denouncing this. A massive firestorm on social media after the Olympics opening, with critics calling it appalling and an insult to billions of Christians around the world. Across the globe, voices have risen in outrage. Christians are asking, who approved this? Were there no Christian voices on the Olympic Committee? Is this yet another instance where Christians must go by Isaiah 53 verse 7. Oppressed and afflicted, yet not expected to open their mouths. Led like lambs to slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is silent, so we should not open our mouths. I could not believe the gaslighting against Christian voices that spoke up against the mockery of their faith. Beloved brothers and sisters, I believe we must end the silence. It is time for us to speak up. It is time to contend for the faith. Like Jude, we must take concern because the faith, that is the message of the gospel, is under attack on many fronts. False teachers who are spreading dangerous heresies and outright scoffers who seek to undermine and erode it. In fact, the Greek word Jude chooses, translated, contend earnestly, usually describes an athlete striving with extreme intensity to win the victory in a physical competition. It is no coincidence that those who seek to undermine and erode the Christian message of the gospel chose the occasion of the global athletics competition. We understand from the scriptures that the mockery of Christianity did not start at the 2024 Olympics. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 41 and 42, we read, in the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. They said, he saved others but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross and we will believe in him. The mockery of Christ is nothing new. It started at the cross 
and has continued through the ages. But because this phenomenon predates us, it does not mean we should allow our rights to be trampled upon. In recent years, we've witnessed increasing hostility towards Christians expressing their faith. In the streets of the UK and the US and Canada, preachers of the gospel are often attacked for sharing the message of love and peace. Yet when a global event like the Olympics mocks our sacred practices, we are told it's just inclusivity. What kind of inclusivity mocks the beliefs of 2.6 billion Christians? Remember when Charlie Hebdo caricatured the Prophet Muhammad, sparking violence and outrage? Such actions are universally condemned. So why should the mockery of Christianity be any different? Imagine if other religions were subjected to the same disrespect. Would it be tolerated? This isn't just about an event or a scene. It's about a broader trend of disdain and mockery against our faith. In Psalm 74 verse 10, David cried out, How long will the enemy mock you, God? Will the foe revile your name forever? Apparently, Christianity remains the most tolerant faith. Christ, the role model of Christianity, demonstrated this virtue when he prayed for his tormentors. He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Christians are taught through the scriptures to bear with one another, but more importantly, to love and pray for their enemies. And this we do gladly. However, loving our enemies involves pointing out sin and pointing them to the truth of God's word. This part of Christianity is what people who are still held captive by their sinful nature find offensive and misinterpret as passing judgment. When people choose to love sin and reject God, the Bible warns us in Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The rejection of God and the mockery of Christianity will have consequences. God will certainly punish sin. History shows us that mockers face the judgment of God. King Herod and Pontius Pilate mocked Jesus, yet their kingdoms fell. In 2 Chronicles chapter 36 and verse 16, we read, But they mocked God's messengers, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord was aroused against his people and there was no remedy. We are witnessing a time when all forces seem aligned against Christianity. But take heart, God's sovereignty is unshaken. Romans chapter 1 verse 26 to 32 warns that those who mock and reject God will face their consequences. God will not be mocked and he will bring justice. However, the Christian duty is to continue doing good. We must not grow weary in doing good. For in due time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I believe one reward for not giving up is when God answers our intercession and delivers those who are still held in captivity by their sinful passions. As Christians, we must stand firm, speak boldly, defend faith with love and resolve. Let us not be silent in the face of mockery. We are called to be the voice for justice, to uphold the sanctity of our beliefs and to remember that God will remember. Let us pray, let us act, and let us trust in God's ultimate justice. The mockery may be loud, but our faith is louder. Stand firm, for the harvest is coming. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for strength to stand against mockery of our faith. Help us to remain steadfast, to speak your truth with courage. May your justice prevail and may we be a light in this dark world. In Jesus' name, amen. In a world filled with noise and chaos, we seek clarity and truth. Join us on Edify as we dive into contemporary issues and explore them through the Christian lens. Guided by the Bible, we aim to inspire and uplift. Welcome to Edify, enlightening minds, transforming hearts.